Well, it was kind of a whirlwind when I, I go every year in April for my yearly mammogram. And I had had a cough and I'd had like a, like a spot right here on my chest wall that I thought every day seemed like it got a little bigger. So I called my daughter in Wichita and I, she's a, an RN, and I asked her if maybe I just had a gland that was maybe swollen. She goes, Mom, you don't have a gland there that would be swollen for, from a cold. You need to go to the doctor. I said, well, I have my mammogram, you know, here within two weeks. And she said, Mom, you need to go to the doctor today. That doesn't sound good. So I end up going in for my mammogram a little early and nothing showed up, but I told the tech that I had this little lump. And so she told me that she would, um, they would probably call me back in a couple days and do a sonogram of it. And so they did. And then they did another mammogram and it doesn't show anything on the mammogram. So the sonogram showed you know, this, it showed the lump really well. So then they called me in for a chest x-ray. And all within three weeks, I knew that I had an aggressive cancer. Told me I had to have surgery. This was in um, May. My daughter was getting married June 13th. And so we'd been planning a whole year for her this wedding. And I just didn't want to take away from her. You know, right. I knew I had... We could get through this, and so I went in for my, a surgery um, the last week of May, May 27th, and had um, lumpectomy, and it came back that I had triple negative cancer, which hardly nobody has. And, and what is triple negative well, cancer? Well, everybody, you're, you have like estrogen positive, progesterone positive, or HER2 positive. And they're all hormones, while well, all of mine are negatives. And so it's not a good thing. I mean, I thought, oh, good, but it's not a good thing. And Dr. Fiesen, who I was thankful to have as my oncologist, said that seven years ago, you would not live with this. It was not treatable. Wow. And so he said, we will treat it very aggressive. You will have several surgeries. So I went back in. Well, I said, well, you know, my daughter's getting married. I want to... I want to wait till after the wedding to start chemo and all that because I didn't want to lose my hair. And so the week after her wedding, which was June 13th, I went back for surgery and they um, took out lymph nodes and found out that, that it wasn't in my lymph nodes, which was wonderful. I caught it quickly. And so all the tissue that they had taken out, the lump and the tissue, all came back that... It hadn't got into the margins, so they thought they got it all. But being triple negative, I still had to go through a year of treatment. So I went through oh, four months of chemo. And I my first round of chemo was um, adriamycin, and they call it the red devil. And they always teased me out there because the little old guys, they'd say, I want that Kool-Aid because it was red. And they'd say, no, you know, this is, this is what they call the red devil. It, it's not good to you, but it does good at what we need to have it do good at. And so, anyway, I started that. And after my first round of chemo, I lost all my hair. Mm -hmm. And that was very devastating. I mean, being a woman, I mean, you see a lot of guys without hair, but being a woman, it was just... That was probably my most devastating. And I decided that, I mean, everybody was saying, why you, why you, you're healthy, you eat right, you exercise all the time, you don't have any, you don't smoke, you don't drink. And I said, I got it because I could handle it. And nobody else in my family I don't think could have. I mean, I just knew that I was strong and I was going to beat it. And I had a good friend. We walked, still walked probably 17 miles a week. Wow. Yeah, and we power walk. And so, anyway, I just stayed as strong as I could. I was way sick for a while, but then I I decided that, you know, they put me on several different medicines, and I got through that. And then over the holidays, I got to go through radiation, which was wonderful because it's you're not sick, you're, 
I mean, you feel good. My hair started coming back, and Dr. Feason told me, well, you probably won't lose your hair this with this next round of chemo. And so in January, I started chemo again. And yes, I lost my oh, hair again. No. <laughs> but that was all right. I mean, I was already, I could deal with that. And I always wore a ball cap. I hardly ever wore a wig to church and to weddings and that. But otherwise, and, you know, I just decided that this was going to be me and this is how I was going to do it. And I cleaned for people. And so, you know, I didn't have to go in with my wig on. I just went and everybody got used to it and everybody was so supportive. And, um, then at the end of May, I, they ran all my scans again, and everything showed absolutely no cancer. Nice. And I've been out of treatment. It was a year, May 26th. Correct. I've been out of treatment, and I still go every three months, have all my blood work, and they do all my scans every six months, and I've had no signs of any cancer. I just had all my blood work done on Monday, matter of fact, of this week, and everything is perfect and where it needs to be awesome and so you know those of you that don't think you can go through it you can i mean you just you just got to stay positive i mean set beside several people at the cancer center on a weekly basis you know you get to the point where you kind of feel sorry for yourself and then that's when you you don't do as well you just got to keep your head up and just keep going and tons of cards tons of phone calls I mean, people are amazing in this town. Mm, I mean, it's they just, are. yeah. And our doctors, we have so much to be proud of with the cancer center here. I mean, I didn't have to drive when I went through radiation. You have it every day. And I had 48 treatments. So I would have had to drive to Hutch 48 days for about a four or five minute treatment. And I was able to go out here every morning and still head on to my job. And, and, and I mean, it, it was perfect. And great, great doctors that come were so lucky because the um, radiologist, oncologist, she comes from Salina, and then Dr. Feason comes from Hutch, mm -hmm. and he comes Wednesdays and Fridays, and smartest man in the world. I mean, I just think he is, that's why I'm still living. Awesome. I mean, so what advice would you give to maybe somebody out there who is, is afraid? They think they may have something, but they haven't. Yeah. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Yeah. I mean, just simply because if I would have waited, and if I would have been scared about it, I wouldn't have be sitting here talking to you right now. I mean, it, that's how fast growing mine was. It and, had to, and what level did you tell me you were at? Grade two. Grade two. Uh-huh. Yeah. But it was triple negative. Yeah. And so, you know, that's just something that I would have, if I would have waited, I would have been gone. Or if I would have gotten it, you know, several months before I was to go for my normal you know, and just thought, oh, well, it's just a gland, then I probably wouldn't be here. What was the time frame from the time that you found it to the time you went to the doctor? Uh, probably eight days. Oh, wow. Yeah. Anyway, Great. I was kind of ready for it, but yet when you find, get the final word, it's like, I mean, you don't remember anything for two or three days. It's just like a blur, and then it's just, okay, you can do this. And, I mean, the nurses at the cancer center are amazing i mean they're so used to this every day they know what to say they're so caring i mean i would have thought i was their family the way they treated me and you know you have days that you just feel absolutely lousy and you still got to go to it but they just make you feel i mean it's i just can't say enough about that place it's just it's amazing my goal was to do at least a half marathon and my best friend and i we did the half marathon through regional. Nice. And yes, and I got second place. And awesome. Yeah, and so I just feel, I mean, I just feel blessed. I'm just so thankful that I've had the friends and the support and people coming just to pray that I hardly even knew. You know, it's just, it just says a lot for our community. It does. I mean, it's just, it's a great place to be. It is. It really people. is. I'm thankful and I just feel amazing and you have lots of hair and i got i got a ton of hair when it came in i had a really good friend that walked me through it because she'd been through it the year before me and she lives here in great bend and when her started coming in it was just way curly and dark and i thought you know i don't really care it's hair mm -hmm. and that's exactly what she thought and anyway when mine started coming in that's exactly how mine was i'm thinking oh my gosh 
I need to go to the beauty shop and get this straightened and get it, you know, and it was just like, it's hair, yeah. you know. So, but I do, I have a ton of hair now, so that's a good thing. That's awesome. Yeah, wow. it is. That is awesome. So, and you're feeling great. And I feel amazing. Wow. feel amazing. Yes. I wow. work every day and, matter of fact, some 10-hour days and I feel amazing. I still have time to exercise and my friend, I mean, that's just, we just like push each other. She said, here, I should be pushing you and you've been pushing me through all of this. And she said, it's just, I mean, we're just great for each other. I mean, it's just helped both of us. So that is awesome. it's made us both stronger. And, that is awesome. And my family is very, very strong. And every time we hear of someone that's getting ready to go through it, it's it's hard. It's like starting all over. Uh-huh. And so but we're lucky. We're very lucky that we have the programs we have here in our town and don't have to travel. And Very so. cool.